lithium-ion batteries generate heat in operation. In order to extend their lifetime, it is important to keep them cool through effective thermal management. There are two types of cooling for lithium-ion batteries, surface cooling and tab cooling. Most lithium-ion battery designs on the market today use surface cooling. High cooling rates are possible, but this comes at the expense of significant layer-to-layer -layer temperature gradients, which cause uneven degradation across the cell. This shortens the lifetime of the battery, and the uneven degradation across the cell can increase the risk of thermal runaway. Temperature gradients within cells and battery packs are inevitable, but tab-cooled systems greatly mitigate the negative effects. Tab-cooled cells have very low temperature gradients between layers in the cell. This means each layer in the cell behaves the same, degrading at the same rate. This extends the lifetime of the whole battery and makes it safer and more efficient. A key problem is that cell manufacturers normally design to maximize energy density over everything else to meet the market demand. This results in cells that are very energy dense but very bad for heat rejection. This, in turn, causes designers to over-engineer thermal management solutions. For example, the actual cells make up only 64% of the Tesla Model 3 battery pack. Is there a better way? In order to improve battery thermal management, we need to understand and quantify a cell's heat rejection capabilities. Researchers at Imperial College London have developed the cell cooling coefficient. This is a tool to estimate the rate of heat rejection for a given temperature gradient, which can be measured by anyone. A constant for a particular cell and cooling method, a metric against which any two cells can be compared, and a standard for competition and improvement. This information can then be used to evaluate heat rejection to inform cell design and cell selection for any application. How can we use the cell cooling coefficient? Let's assume that we want to make a 15 amp hour battery pack that is capable of fully discharging in 15 minutes. The designer has a choice to use either three 5 amp hour cells or two 7.5 amp hour cells. Ideally, the pack would operate at 25 degrees centigrade. In our study, cell A has a coefficient of 0.332 for tab cooling and 0.980 for surface cooling. Cell B has a coefficient of 0.204 for tab cooling and 1.907 for surface cooling. For the required discharge rate, we measured the average heat generation to be 5 watts for cell A and 8.3 watts for cell B. Both cells operated within 5 degrees centigrade of the desired temperature when surface cooled. However, if tab cooling, cell B's tabs must be kept 40 degrees centigrade below the cell's maximum temperature which is unsafe. The cell cooling coefficient has simply demonstrated that cell B is entirely unsuitable for tab cooling. Cell A would be better suited to tab cooling. Its tabs would need to be kept just 15 degrees below the cell's operating temperature. In this case, the extended pack lifetime of the tab cooled solution must be weighed against the lower operating temperatures of the surface cooled pack. In this case, the cell cooling coefficient is used to inform battery pack design decisions. Is it possible to increase the heat removal rate for tab-cooled cells? Yes. Research has shown that countersided tabs are better. Wider tabs are also better, but neither solution is enough to match surface cooling in terms of overall cooling potential. However, increasing tab thickness proved extremely effective in reducing average temperature with comparable cooling rates and the advantage of a much smaller temperature gradient between layers. This results in better performance and longer lifetime. The lithium-ion battery industry is currently trapped in subsystem optimization of energy density. Our research on tab design shows how simple cell redesign can improve tab cooling and extend battery lifetime. The cell cooling coefficient allows the thermal performance of any cell from any manufacturer to be easily compared. Implemented as a standard metric, it would be immediately useful for cell evaluation and battery pack design. The cell cooling coefficient has the potential to revolutionize the battery industry, triggering competition to design better, more efficient, safer battery packs.